Okay, is the screen visible? Yes. All right. Now let's calculate the volume for this. I said that the volume of this uh, rectangular box is simply going to be length times width times height. Now, what is going to be the length of this metal sheet? You can refer to this diagram. It's not going to be 24. That is the catch. See, the remaining part, the remaining part was folded. Yes, the remaining part was folded to form the uh, rectangular box. So this length, is going to be 24 minus 2x because it is going to be 24 minus 2x. Same goes for the width. This is going to be 15 minus 2x. 15 minus 2x. 15 minus 2x. Multiply by the height that is x. Now you need to multiply this, multiply these three factors and check if it simplifies to 4x cubed minus 78x squared plus 360x. So if I multiply x with 24 minus 2x, I'm going to get 24x minus 2x squared times 15 minus 2x. Sorry. 24x times 15 is going to be 360x and 24 times 24x times 2x is going to be 48x squared. So 4x cubed minus 78 x square plus 360 x are we all getting this this was asked to prove this was asked to show in the first part yes sir the second part says find the stationary value of the volume and the value of x for which this occurs so what is the stationary value of the volume? If we have the volume exp expression, to find the stationary value, I can just differentiate the volume with respect to x. So the differentiation is going to be 12x squared minus, what's 78 times 2? 156x plus 360. Okay, that is dv by dx. To find the stationary value, I'm going to equate this to zero and then solve for x. Now you can take 12 common as well from the expression. So you're going to get x squared minus 13x plus 30 equals to zero and solve the remaining quadratic equation for x. So what are the two values coming? Sir, five and six. I'm, 
I'm getting 10 and 3. Please recheck. Are we all getting the same answers, 10 and 3 now? No, sir, I'm still getting 6 and 5. What about others? One X square minus 13 X plus 30. We can go for factorization. So if you take out the prime factors of 30, what do you get? X square minus 15 X plus two X plus 30 e equals to zero. You can take X. sorry this is going to be x square minus 10x minus 3x plus 30 equals to 0 so x minus 3 times x minus 10 is 0 x is 3 and x is 10 is it clear now yes Yes, sir. But which value of x would I be picking up? I need a logical answer for this. Metal sheet, they call length of width. Why 3 and why not 10? Like the height is supposed to be small. Basically, the reason is that the sides should the sides should be the length should be positive. So if you remember, the width was coming out to be 15 minus 2x. If I would be taking x as 10, this would make my breadth to be negative, which is not possible. So the right answer is 3. Okay. So now the question is asking find the stationary value of v. So I'm going to plug this value of x back into the equation. Get me the value please. coming to 486. 486. Is it coming out to be 46? Three again. Sorry? Can you three and ten? Three and not ten. Ah, sure. Let's just let let us take a break for one minute. I want the azan to be done. Okay. Just give me one minute.
ऑर्डर प्लेस नाउ द क्वेश्चन वाज कि व्हाई व्हाई नॉट 10 एंड व्हाई 3 द रीजन बीइंग दैट वन ऑफ द डायमेंशन ऑफ दिस रेक्टेंगुलर बॉक्स वाज कमिंग आउट टू बी 15 minus 2x now if i am going to take x as 10 this means 15 minus 20 negative 5 can the width be negative 5 no no that is that is the reason we are going to neglect the value of x as 10 and we are going to pick 3 now when x is 3 what is going to be the we know that the stationary value of the volume is occurring at x is x equals to 3 so what is that stationary value? So in order to find the value of the volume, I'm going to plug x as 3 into the equation of the volume to get the volume that the, to get the stationary value of the volume. 486 centimeter cube is the stationary value of the volume and the value of x at which it occurs is 3. Okay. Yeah, now determine the nature of this stationary value. Is it the maximum possible volume or is it the minimum possible volume? So to find that we are going to differentiate the derivative of volume. dv over dx was 12x squared minus 156x plus 360. 12x squared minus 156x plus 360. Now I'm going to differentiate this again. So the result is 24x minus 156. Now we are trying to find the value, the, the nature of the value at x, as, x equals to 3. So if I plug in 3 over here, would you agree that it is going to result in a negative value? So if, if the second derivative comes out to be negative, meaning less than zero, then therefore you can say that the V is maximum. The stationary value of V is a maximum value. Clear? Yes, sir. Can you go back to the previous slide? Thanks. So you can move on. Okay. Any questions? Why not? No. No. Okay. okay. Let's try this one as well. Sir, can you go back so for a second? Yeah. Sure. This slide or the previous one? This one, sir. Thank you, sir. You can move on. A piece of wire of length 2 meter is bent to form the shape PQRST. So I have taken a piece of wire and this wire was bent to form this shape. PQST is a rectangle. I can see that PQST is a rectangle. And QRS is a semicircle with diameter SQ. And the piece of wire was this entire length was two meter. So if you're bending a two meter wire to form this shape, would you agree that the perimeter of this entire shape is going to be two meter? Yes. Now the length given to you, PT is given to you as X and PQ and ST are given to you as Y. So it's a rectangle. So this is going to be Y and the diameter of the semicircle is also going to be X meter. The total area of the shape, the total area enclosed by this shape. Now total area means area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. The first part says express Y in terms of X. So to find y in terms of x, we are going to use the information given in the question first. We knew that the length of the wire is 2 meter and this 
was bent to form this shape so if i calculate the perimeter of this shape it must be equal to 2 meter so for the first part the working for the first part is going to be that the perimeter of the shape is going to be 2 meter so perimeter is the length of pt plus ts plus pq plus the arc length srq this is the arc length the perimeter is 2 pt is x ts and pq are y so that's going to be 2y now how can we find the arc length of a semicircle basically that's the same as saying finding the circumference of a semicircle any suggestions so pi r 2 pi r upon 2 okay so simply pi times radius what is the radius over here x upon 2 x upon 2 so the arc length is simply going to be pi x upon 2 they want you to express y in terms of x which means they want you to make y the subject so to make y the subject i am going to take everything on the other and other side so if 2 is going going to go on the other side and divide this is going to be 1 minus x by 2 minus pi by 4 x okay now it's up to you you can simplify this further as well by making the denominator common you are going to get 4 4 minus 2 x minus pi x this is y is the first part clear yes 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 sir now if we have made y if we have made y the subject correctly we are going to be able to show the second part that says show that the area comes out to be this to find the area now whenever even if the question does not have this first part and you see that the question in the sec like the question that you are being asked to show is only an expression in terms of x and not in terms of y then obviously you will have to come up with an equation that will express y in terms of x because the area equation does not have y right now now if i write down the work if i do the working for finding the area i know it's a rectangle so the rectangle will have an area of x times y and the area of the semicircle is just going to be pi r square over 2 so radius was sir? x upon 2 pi r square upon 2 g sir for example if the part a wasn't given to us then also we, we would have we would have been required to find x in terms of y in terms of x right yes that is Because right that is what i was saying yeah because if you start directly part b this is the first step that you are going to come up with and you can see very well that there is y that needs to be replaced to show this expression so you will have to do part 1 even if they don't ask okay, okay. now to now to show this i am going to replace y with 4 minus 2x minus pi x upon Four, and this is going to be pi x square upon eight. If you multiply this and divide and separate the terms, you are going to get four x minus two x square minus pi x square over four. I'm splitting up the terms so that I can show what the examiner wants me to show. so this is x 
minus 1 upon 2 x square. Now you can solve this part. Minus 5 upon 4 plus 5 by 8, what value will it give you? Minus 5 upon 4 plus 5 upon 8. This is same as saying 5 upon 8 minus 5 upon 4. So pi minus 2 pi, which is negative pi upon 8. So this is going to come out as negative pi upon 8 x square. Isn't this the area that they wanted us to show? Yes. Clear? Yeah. Is there anything you want me to repeat? No, sir. I'm clear. What about others? It's clear. It's clear. Okay. Now, for part C, I need to find, I need to differentiate this area with respect to x, and then I need to do the second derivative. So let's try. dA by dx is going to be differentiation of x is 1. Half times 2 is going to be 1. x minus 2 pi upon 8 is simply going to be pi upon 4 x. This is the first derivative. The second derivative is going to be minus 1 minus pi by 4. Are we all on the same page? Yes. Okay, now the part D says find the value for x for which there is a stationary value. So to find that value, Okay, I'm going to erase this working. So answer D, find the value of X for which there is a stationary value of A. To so DA, I'm going to first set DA by DX equal to zero. So zero equals to one minus X minus pi by four X. So the value is going to come out as x plus pi upon 4x equals to 1. I can take x common. And x is going to come out as 1 over 1 plus pi upon 4. So I don't think there is a need to give the exact answer. So one plus pi upon four, if even you do it from the calculator, is so the exact answer that they know the kesekarte. This is going to be four plus pi upon four. And if you reciprocate it, you are going to get four upon four plus pi. Right? Four over four plus pi is a value around zero point five six zero zero nine. Now, you need to find the stationary value of A. Once you have the value of A for which the stationary value of A is occurring, you can just plug this value in the area equation. The area equation is given to you over here. So I can take 0 0.56009, 0 0.56009 minus half times 0.56009. You can also take the exact value. Say, like in some kuch calculator, I will plug in karna. 0.56009. What is the value of area coming out?
What is the value? Uh, 0 0.499. 0 0.499. I don't know. Uh, is anyone other, is any other person getting the same value? I said, let me work this with the exact value and see what do we get. We know that X is coming out to be 4 over 4 plus pi. And the area equation is x, x, which is 4 upon 4 plus pi minus 1 upon 2 x square. So that is going to be 4 upon 4 plus pi square minus 1 upon 8 pi x cube. That was 4 upon 4 plus pi cube. Okay. I'm going, I'm going, I'm showing you the simplification. So 4 upon 4 plus pi minus the numerator is also going to be squared up and the denominator is also going to be squared up. 4 squared is 16, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 over 4 plus pi, the whole thing squared. 4 cube is 64, 64 over 8 is 8. So this is going to be 8 pi upon 4 plus pi q. If I make the denominators common, I'm going to get 4 plus pi q. I'll have to multiply this with 4, pi, 4 plus pi square. This is going to be multiplied with 4 plus pi and this is going to be multiplied by 1. So 4 times 4 plus pi square minus 8 times 4 plus pi minus 8 pi. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys, there was a square over here, not the cube. My bad. Please correct this. So this is just going to be multiplied by one. This isn't going to be multiplied by anything. Please make a correction over here. Minus eight minus and four square is 16, 16 upon two. This number is also gonna change. 16 upon eight is two. So this is going to give you negative two pi. Negative two pi. Okay. Then if you simplify this, you get 16 plus four pi minus eight minus two pi over four plus pi squared. 16 minus eight is eight, four pi minus two pi is plus two pi over four plus pi, the whole thing squared. If I take two common from the numerator, I'm going to get four plus pi. The denominator has four plus pi squared. This can be simplified further to give two over four plus pi. This is the area. This is the stationary value of the area. Is this working clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, now if I want to find the nature of this stationary point. What, what am I going to do? I did find the second derivative. The second derivative was coming out to be minus one minus pi by four. This does not have any X value. So irrespective of the value of X, this is always going to be a maximum value. Since the second derivative, second derivative of the area is equal to minus one minus pi by four, which is a negative value itself. So the area, the stationary value is a maximum value. Okay. Anything you would like to copy down from the previous slide? If anything isn't clear, please let me know. Yes, sir. All right. 
So please try this one on your own. A volume of a solid cuboid. The word solid means that if there, it's not hollow. It's a solid figure. You can touch all the faces of this cuboid. The volume is 576 centimeter cube. The surface area is A. Express Y in terms of X. So obviously we are going to use the information given to us and the information is related to the volume. So if I want to find the volume, volume is going to be 2x times x times y. The volume is 576, 2x square times y. So y is going to be 576 upon 2x square. After simplification, this is going to come out as 288 over x square. Is the first part clear? Yes. Okay, for the second part, show that A comes out to be 4x squared plus 1728 upon x. This, which area are they talking about? They are talking about the surface area. Now, the surface area of a cuboid is basically the area of all the faces. So, if you see this phase, there are two such faces. One is at one is in the front, one is at the back. The area of the, this face, this rectangular face, is going to be two x square. And there are two such areas. One is in the front, one is at the back. What is the area of this face? x into y x into y and how many areas are how many such faces are there there is going to be one face at the right and one face at the left so two times x y okay Sorry? and then finally we have the top face what is going to be the area of the top face 2x into y 2x into x 2x into y and then times by 2 because there is also a bottom face so this is the total surface area so 4x square plus 2xy plus 4xy, 4x square plus 6xy. Now, the problem is that I will have to replace y over here. So y comes out to be 288 upon x square. What is 288 times 6? One seven two eight. One seven two eight over x. This was the area that they asked us to show. Okay. Now the part C says the same thing. Find the maximum value of A and state the dimensions of this cuboid for which this occurs. So to solve this, you can differentiate the area. Area can be written as four x square plus seven twenty eight x to the power of negative 1. You differentiate this, you're going to get 8x negative minus 1728 over x squared. All right. And to find this maximum value, the maximum value already means stationary value. So you're going to set this equal to 0. 8x equals to 728 upon x squared. You cross multiply and simplify this, you are going to get x cubed equals to 728 divided by 8, that is 216. You are going to take the cube root of 216. What is the cube root of 216 coming out? Six. Six. Right. So six centimeter. Now the question is saying, find the maximum value of A and state the dimension of the cuboid for which this occurred. So if the value of X is six, what are going to be the dimension? The length is going to be two times six. 
12. The width is 6. And the height is y. And y was equal to 288 upon x squared. So 288 upon x squared. 288 upon 36 is 8. So this cuboid has a length of 12 centimeter, width is 6 centimeter, and the height is 8 centimeter. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, let's try the last question as well. The diagram shows a window made from a rectangle with base 2R and height is H and a semicircle of radius R. The perimeter of the window is 6. So, perimeter comprises of the rectangle plus the arc length. And the perimeter is given to you as 6. You need to express H in terms of R. So I'm going to use the information about the area or the perimeter first. Sir? Yeah. For the perimeter, won't we ignore um, one side of the rectangle? No, we are not going to ignore this side. We are not going to ignore this side because they have given us a solid line. And the question says the diagram shows a window made from a rectangle with a base 2R and the height H and a semicircle of radius R. Okay, as, as far as I think, I don't know, we solve it and see it. As far as I think, because they have given you a solid line, not the dotted line, so we are going to count that side into the perimeter. Okay, let's check. Check kar lete. Okay. Agar count karte hai, aur hum area ye show karne ki karte hai. If we are successful in showing this area, that means we were right. Okay. So oh. for the perimeter of the window, I know it is the rectangle has a perimeter of two times length plus two times width of the rectangle is h. So 2 times 2R plus 2H plus the R length of a semicircle is 2 pi R over 2. So 4R plus 2H plus pi R and the perimeter was equal to 6 meter. Sir, so, but then won't we be counting the same They want line? us to make H the subject. is going to come out as 6 minus 4 uh, which length lengthwise that the reason being that I have and this is the perimeter of a rectangle okay that gives you the check color then as well so this is H. So can you repeat you lagged for me? Okay. What do you want me to repeat? So did you hear my question? Yes, I did and I answered it. So I will tell you again. I will tell you Basically, I was trying to say that, uh, okay, I was trying to say that, your question was that we repeat this length again. 
सही है आ, आपको लग रहा है कि हम इस लेंथ को वापस से कैलकुलेशन ले रहे हैं बट हम नहीं ले रहे हैं जब मैं रेक्टेंगल का पैरामीटर निकाल रहा था सो दिस दीज आर द फोर लेंथ दैट आई अकाउंटेड फॉर एंड व्हेन आई वाज फाइंडिंग द आर्क लेंथ आर्क लेंथ इज ओनली दिस लेंथ सो 2 पाई आर अपॉन 2 इज जस्ट दिस वैल्यू ये आर्क लेंथ है सर बस प्लस दिस प्लस जी Two pi upon two is also the perimeter. So for perimeter, won't all the sides be counted? No, two pi r upon two is not the perimeter of the cell of the semicircle. Okay, please clear this concept. अगर आपके पास एक semicircle में देता हूँ, and if I ask you to find the perimeter of a semicircle, the perimeter of a semicircle will be equal to the arc length plus the diameter. So arc length is two pi r upon two. Plus the diameter is 2r. Now over here, I'm not adding 2r. Okay, I'm only accounting for the arc length. Do you understand the difference now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to use this expression of h and plug it. Use it to find the area. Area for this figure is going to be the area of the rectangle. That is two r multiplied by h. Area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. That is pi r square upon two. Is it okay? यहाँ तक सब साथ है मेरे. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now two r times h. H is six minus four r minus pi r upon two plus pi r square upon two. Two and two can be cancelled out. You are going to get six r minus four r square minus pi r square plus pi r square upon two. So six r minus okay. So this is going to come out as four r square minus pi r square upon two. Acha. Hmm. So Renu was right in the first place that this side is not going to be included in this question. Okay. The reason being that we are not able to show the area otherwise, but in your Exams. Whenever such a such question will come, there will always be the diagram should always look like this. That it is going to be a dotted line, not a solid line. Do you understand what I am trying to say? यहाँ पे the confusion arose. Confusion इसलिए हुआ क्योंकि यहाँ पे solid line थी. If this would have been a dotted line, the question would have made more sense. So yes, you are right. यहाँ पे फिर यू विल वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इज यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू काउंट दिस साइड एट ऑल सो इंस्टेड ऑफ टू आर इट्स जस्ट गोइंग टू बी वन आर वन टाइम्स टू आर ये वाली लेंथ ठीक है सो द वर्किंग इज गोइंग टू बी अ लिटिल बिट डिफरेंट सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी टू आर Six minus two r. I'm changing the entire values. Six r minus two r square. ठीक है. That is that is how the answer is shown. It got. It might 
be confusing for you. So if there is any confusion, please ask. I'm going to explain it again. No, sir, it's clear. सही तो वो जो साइड है ना ये वाली आप इसको नहीं काउंट करोगे बिकॉज दिस डज नॉट फॉर्म अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्वेश्चन दिस डज नॉट फॉर्म द पेरीमीटर दिस साइड इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी काउंटेड ठीक है देन ओनली वी कैन प्रूव दिस एरिया एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्किंग रिमेन्स द सेम सो आई वॉन्ट यू टू टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन एंड ट्राई द रिमेनिंग पार्ट सी डी एंड ई एट होम सर या in general circumstances when we not required to show that the area is this then in that case should be consider that line or not because that answer may be used in other parts as well uh i'm sorry there was a lag in your voice can you repeat the question again yeah sir i'm saying in general circumstances when we, when we not asked to show the area now in this question we asked to show the area then we can make sure whether this line should be counted or not but what should we do in general circumstances when we can't make sure what's the answer all right so if i am understanding your question correctly you are trying to say ke can we use this area for the remaining parts if we are not able to solve this is that the question no okay then i would like I'm to repeat the question okay. mm. i'm just saying now we can estimate whether uh, this line should be considered or not because we have been given uh, an answer but what if we weren't yeah. given an answer we would taken uh, the answer that, that you previously got okay that's what i'm trying what i told you initially that in your exam you are always going to be given a figure that is clear in this question this is a question from a book so the question itself wasn't clear they they drew a horizontal line that is that was a solid line so whenever a solid line is drawn we do consider it in the perimeter but if the question comes in your exam and if they do not want the line to be include, included they are going to draw a dotted line not the solid line so if the solid line was in included if the solid line was drawn then the calculation would be such that you will have to include that line in the perimeter to show to solve the question in the exam and if the line is a dotted line then you are not going to include the question is going to be correct over here yahan pe this was a question from a book so i personally believe there should have been a dotted line but yahan pe solid line tha lekin working jo hai wo dotted line के रिस्पेक्ट से हुई थी द लाइन वाज नॉट इंक्लूडेड अच्छा एक और इंटरेस्टिंग बात मैं बता दूं इफ एन एग्जाम लेट्स से यू आर नॉट एबल टू शो दिस एरिया सो डोंट लीव दीस थ्री पार्ट्स इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू शो दिस इफ लेट्स से आपका ये गलत आ रहा है पार्ट बी का आंसर ठीक है तो यू कैन यूज दिस आंसर एंड डू द वर्किंग फॉर पार्ट सी पार्ट डी एंड पार्ट ई समझ आ रही है अगर शो वाला पार्ट आपका आंसर गलत आ रहा है सो यू आर ओनली गोइंग टू लूज मार्क्स फॉर दैट पार्ट डू नॉट लीव द एंटायर क्वेश्चन यूज द आंसर फ्रॉम पार्ट बी एंड सॉल्व द रिमेनिंग पार्ट्स डज दैट मेक सेंस यस ओके हैव यू टेकन द स्क्रीनशॉट ऑफ दैट यस यस ओके there is one more question that i would like you to do try this question at home take a screenshot i'm going to you can send me on whatsapp or we can discuss it in the next class as well i just want you to do this okay try zarur karna is question ko okay all right i'll see you in the next class take care bye bye thank you sir thank you